Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Glad to have you aboard here today, tomorrow, whenever you're tuning in. Following what has been an adventure-filled week for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, some highs, some lows, uh, Stuart Skinner got a shutout, Jack Campbell's been doing some stuff in the AHL, it's been a wild week, Matvey Petrov scored his first professional goal uh, to send the teddy bears flying in Bakersfield last night, so We've seen a lot happen this week, and uh, of course the problem is we've also got a game tonight against the Anaheim Ducks that we got to worry about. Now it's a 7 p.m. start, which is nice. It's not a 2 o'clock on the Sunday, which is uh, really good because you know how that would turn out. But for the Edmonton Oilers, we've got a lot to discuss, so let's get to it. Before we do end up doing that, though, if you are new to the channel, I consider hitting that subscribe button, sticking around here for what will be an adventure-filled rest of the season as well you thought last week was fun let's uh see what happens here the rest of the way home but friends right now as it currently stands for the Edmonton Oilers we're still in the basement right we've got 13 points things just really aren't that great right you know I mean you've you've improved to 6 12 and 1 on the season you're 13 points a win tonight against Anaheim would put you three back of them for 12th place so in the conference that is so again nothing special there although I guess technically that would be four points back of 10th. So you're, you're gaining ground here if you win this evening. That's the big part. And then really you're only another two points out of eighth place. Fancy talk at this point, I get that. But for the Oilers, what the big news last night was, was that Jack Campbell is bringing in his own goaltender coach to the AHL. And this is kind of where we're gonna build off the whole topic. This entire slide is gonna tell us everything. Uh, Jack Campbell likely to make his comeback to the Edmonton Oilers here really shortly. I mean, in no time at all. I'm thinking sometime uh, probably uh, next weekend is when we're looking to see Jack Campbell again. Manny Legacy has come aboard to the AHL Bakersfield Condors to help Jack Campbell regain his game. Campbell worked with him in the summer and he is the former goaltender coach in Columbus. So say what you will of that with Dustin Schwartz and company running the goalies in Edmonton. Obviously, Jack Campbell does have a shutout in the AHL. He stopped 30-plus uh, shots last night in the teddy bear game. And uh, the Oilers find themselves with a severe lack of options. It might not be a lack of options necessarily like nobody has a goalie available. I'm saying lack of options in terms of anything that you're actually thinking you could... Um, get anything for and one uh, one name that kind of I don't know why hasn't popped up we've seen Vajalkma in uh, Arizona be a name that's been thrown out there for the Edmonton Oilers potentially a fit that I think Frank Saravelli liked this week I, I don't know if you're looking at him I don't know why you wouldn't go after Connor Ingram to be honest with you I know he's kind of had a really stellar year this year in Arizona and I'd say I mean what's the real cost going to be on a guy like Connor Ingram to bring him up to Edmonton I don't know but uh, that's a guy that I would be looking for if I'm the Edmonton Oilers and uh, the Arizona Coyotes start falling off here. That's maybe a name you start worrying about a little bit more down the road. That's something I just want to throw out there today. But right, Jack Campbell on his way back to Edmonton here within the next week is what's assumed. Bob stoffer has been pushing this for probably a week, week and a half now that Jack Campbell was going to be the solution all along. And this is just, again, where we had all that speculation about Corey, P Corey Perry, Peter Morazic. You had some talk about Connor or Carter Hart. You had a little bit of talk again about UC Soros. And the Oilers, instead of going with a blow-it-up solution or a blockbuster solution, right? Soros would be a blockbuster. Trust me, you're not getting him cheap. But again, right, instead of going out there and solving this goaltender issue externally, once again, the answer for the Edmonton Oilers in November, December, January is going to be the answer is internal and we're going to give Jack Campbell another chance to prove that he's got the game that is worth $5 million to us against the salary cap this season. So that's where we sit, right? Is all that hoopla, right? Corey Perry falls through in terms of trade talks because he's actually on personal leave. There was a lot of speculation. And this is where I'm really not a fan of how it happened. Yeah, you know what? Shame on me for repeating it. But again, when the insiders are seeing something that's weird like that, and then they're going out there and saying, hey, no, you know what? Hold on. The Oilers might have something cooking here. Well, uh, cool. That's great. But now all it is is just a whole bunch of hoopla for nothing. 
and now we're right back in no better situation than we were before. That's the thing. Is it? It's not that I'm upset that the story was wrong. I'm upset that the Oilers now have to look again to find somebody that fits the profile of what we're looking for in that bottom six the way a 30-some-odd-year-old Corey Perry would. That's, I mean, that's the big part, right? Corey Perry's a guy who looks like an absolute machine for a bottom six in Edmonton, but we'll wait on that one. I mean... Chicago didn't fully shut down trade purposes here, but that'll be a bigger question as the season evolves. And as it currently stands, friends, right, is now all of a sudden with Jack Campbell done coming back up to the NHL here with the Oilers sometime soon, the goaltending speculation goes away. So the Oilers appear, and this is just appear, this is not what I'm saying is true, but it appears that the Oilers believe a Stuart Skinner shutout of the Washington Capitals, who have struggled to score goals this year, and uh, Jack Campbell, obviously, who had a shutout in the AHL and has played some decent hockey in the past few games down there in the AHL, are the solution for now, and probably for the immediate future, in Edmonton. That in and of itself, again, I don't know, we've, we've been going through this entire um, circus for just about a year and a half now with the Oilers and you, you expect at some point somebody in the organization is going to either pay for it not named a head coach or somebody is going to deal with this and get something done uh, but again another week passes and the Edmonton Oilers choose yet again to go to the internal option and just hope that the guys they already have are the guys that can figure it out now that said we're going to see what happens against Anaheim tonight and hopefully it is another night where you win because I'm going to tell you, this is the easiest thing. Is We're all down on the Edmonton Oilers right now. Even if you think they can make the playoffs, you know that the current state of the team is not good enough to get anywhere in the playoffs. So when you ask yourself, man, uh, what would change everything here for the Oilers? Winning. Winning changes everything, friends. We know that after the decade of darkness, how much winning changes everything. 6-12-1, I mean, all of a sudden, say you win the next two and you're 8-12-1. That sounds a lot better, right? You got 17 points. Oh, guess what? You win the next three in a row. Now you're 19. Again, dreamer talk at this point because the Oilers are lucky if they're playing 33% points percentage hockey right now. But, you know, right? Is Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl want to take over the next week, week and a half worth of games? Our fate ends up twisting quite heavily because, again, after another day passes in the NHL after looking at those standings yesterday, the Seattle Kraken are still 8-14 on the year. St. Louis is still 10-9. You've got Calgary now at 8-13, right? So not that much substantially better than us, and they've played two more games than us. Uh, Nashville's at 9-10, so right they're the same amount of games played with us, but... They're only up by five, I guess, right? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't uh, I really don't buy into the hype of the standings are that soft that we're going to be able to make our move. But again, you start making our move, and maybe then we start having those conversations of, hey, you know what? Maybe there is something here worth salvaging this season. Friends, I'm Tyson. This is Stolen TV. I am up on Oda here.